there. getting replaced soon uh, not enough compliance uh, the house settles and shifts around a little bit this isn't our foundation so always having to adjust the geometry of the door to get that to work I need something that's got a little more compliance Of course, you know, it's worked for seven or eight years. I'm not a hurry. Hi, Tibby. Here, you don't want me to, you want me to bright light your face? Well, you don't want to be on camera or what? I'm sorry, Tibby. See, not in the face. Tibby said, I don't mind. You don't mind, Tibby? What about you, Rivka? Rivka says, I'll get used to it, Jimbo. I usually do this in the dark. Well, I usually cut the light off for the donkeys. But uh, I don't think they really mind all that much. Hey, uh, yeah. There. Here's one for some. Ow, Jim, watch my finger, buddy. That's the problem there. Occasionally he'll get you. Occasionally he'll get you. And boy, I'll tell you, donkeys, they've got some strong bite, bite, bite. Their jaws are so strong. All they do is sit around and chew on grass all day long. Oh, yeah. Oh, big old teeth on them. A Tibby bit me one time and. I thought she was going to bite the end of my finger off. Whew. Oh, I screamed. She looked at it. She didn't, she didn't mean it, you know. She just, she just didn't realize she had, she bit down when I put a, put a treat in her mouth. And she bit down and I thought she was going to take the end of my dang finger off. <clears throat> she was as surprised and scared as I was. Her eyes got real big and said, what's that about? Why do you make that noise? Oh, I'm sorry. <sighs> I couldn't be mad at her about that. Jim just gets careless from time to time and gets excited, you know, gets excited to get his treat and nips me a little bit. But, uh, Got to be careful. It's one of those, uh, one of those uh, things, you know, one of those hazards. Maybe I should start wearing some gloves all the time. In the winter time, I normally wear gloves. I'm thinking about getting some gloves, but uh, I got to be able to use my fingertips. I think I might be able to find some kind of solution that'll help out some a little somehow. But uh, I don't know if it'd be donkey proof or not, though. What I'm thinking about. Anyhow, let's go see the sheepsters. I see you donkey now. If you donkeys come up here in the morning, we won't have to fight with the sheep in the morning over your cookies and stuff. Remember this morning how the sheep were getting all mad because uh, they don't like sweet potatoes for some reason. 
I don't know, just dentition or some problem, some kind, I think. I'll see you donkeys in the morning. here there the sheep are got the ram here recently the three uh ewes have been with me oh since the end of may or beginning of no probably june or july i guess somewhere in june or july and uh yeah they're something like that i know they're here for the hailstorm. we got them about a week before the big hailstorm. Anyhow, uh, uh, you know, the ram there in the center, he's uh, at Samson, and then we got Lily and Sadie, and that's Marble over there. Marble's kind of the troublemaker. You got to watch out for her. She'll sneak up on you. And uh, she, like, she's the one that figured out how to get through the mesh, through the, uh, through the electric fence over there, and uh, decided she wanted to come up to the house all the time. That's why we got this fence right here and marble. I was actually planned for a long time, but she expedited it all right. She was the expediter on that one. Looks like she's getting some salt. Got some sheep minerals in that feeder right there. I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna move that over to the uh, new uh, building there. It's gonna be a little sheep shed, a little small one for the time being. And that's the main chicken house. Our, our, the bulk of our chicken flock is in the wrong place right now because, well, they grew up back over at the house and I just haven't moved them. We had a little breakdown on our gator and uh, just haven't been able to get it, uh, get it repaired. A lot, of, a lot of activity this summer that precluded that. Um, we're getting it taken into the shop this week, I think. Ah, hey, uh, dang, uh, it was a surplus item, and we got it from a guy that, uh, we thought that he had done much work on it, well, it looks like he just, uh, it looks like he just, uh, you know, stuck some, uh, replacement plastic body panels on it, and, uh, spray, spray painted them off, spray painted those olive drab and said John Deere green, and, I don't know. I know he's. I don't burn the guy. But uh, the problem is, is that the uh, the motor mount on one side was missing a bunch of bolts, and it had one motor mount bolt on it that was holding it on. Then another little mechanism on the other side that uh, that was it on one side of the engine. And uh, instead of having four bolts on that side, it only had one, and and that little doodad there, and it. Uh, well, it ended up shearing it off after we ran it around the property for uh, about two years. And uh, the, uh, that was a little plate that holds the engine to the motor mount. Well, the uh, engine fell down and hit that uh, plate and uh, well, the oil filter sticking out the side of the motor hit that plate and punched a hole in it. And uh, well, we got to get that fixed. This is just a big, it's not a huge big deal. I just got it. I haven't got any way to do it here. I haven't got anything, right things to do it with. So, anyhow, we have some gator operations eventually here. All military gator. But, um, yeah. So, this is the gate that we, this is the gate here. And, it's always kind of a thing with the sheep. They want to come on this side because they, uh, they, 
it's one of those grass is always greener on the other side kind of things uh, but um, usually what happens is I dump out a little corner over there and they just forget all about it and they run down to see me and while they're doing that I come back and I close the gate and and uh, you know they can't get out and works out good that way it's psychological you know the other uh, the chickens and the, the guineas and the, the geese are already gone in for the night see the chickens back the main flock of chickens back there is already gone in shut them in but uh, oh yeah yeah whenever the gators are back up and running I'm gonna do a night operation and move the bulk of the uh, the uh, chicken flock down here to the main chicken house that'll be a nighttime headlamp operation uh, yeah yeah I might end up investing in a, uh, a low light red light to do that with instead of the big lights on my helmet of course you know the, the flashing the strobe on these things well, you'd be surprised how effective that is on on uh, some of these animals around here as far as disorientation and all. It really does work, um, you know. I run, uh, well, <laughs> I've been running Streamlight gear, um, you know. I've got uh, TLR HL, uh, TLR, um, TLR 1 HL on the right side here tonight because it's got a little bit of a wider beam on it that mic on this helmet might be in the way but uh it's got a little bit wider beam on it whereas the uh <clears throat> the, the the light on the left is actually a higher lumen light but it's a uh tlr no it's a protac uh let's see let's see i i, I can do this without taking my helmet off believe it or not yeah, this is a Streamlight ProTac uh, rail mount HLX with the laser. I got it because I got a good deal on it. And, uh, well, I might run it on something other than a helmet from time to time. So it's kind of a multi-function thing. If I've got it on that other device, it you know, may or may not you know, make duck sounds. Uh, I found that, um, it, um, <clears throat> it works really good. And then I've got it, if I've got it on my helmet here, it gives me a nice tight beam. You know, it gives me a good beam to drive with. It's way out in the distance there. But, um, I, I noticed on the cam on camera the other night, I did another, recorded some more video and it just was not giving me up close widespread like i was looking for of course you know the tlr1 hl is a is a pistol light as opposed to a a uh, rifle light um anyhow yeah let's go see the sheep
mentioned it the other day that I had some seeds popping here. This is some kale that I planted. It's grown a little bit. Nice warm sunny day. Uh, where I'm at here in undisclosed location, uh, I can pretty much. Good night, everybody. Good night, geese. Good night, guineas. Good night, chicken dinners. Good night, everybody. Glad to see y'all made it. <clears throat> Where I'm here in this undisclosed location, I can grow uh, a lot of brassicas through the winter. Kale or there, that green over there is, uh, that's all. All turnip, turnips coming up there. Uh, mainly for the uh, for the animals to have some winter forage, but you know, we'll pull some turnips and eat them too, or turnip greens, or eat kale salad. I've got stuff planted all over the place. This is just uh, some here in the chicken yard. Uh, I'm still doing some remodeling down here. You can tell that's kind of rigged a little bit, but and it works. Uh, poor Mac here, uh, it's been good for me. I've had it for, oh, I guess uh, seven or eight years, something like that. I had to replace the battery in a little bit ago, but it's normal, you know, and it only lasts so long. Uh, it was easy to change. Looks like we got some visitors. Hi, Samson. Sadie, you need to get down, sweetheart. Here you go, Samson. Lily, you want one? Sadie. Marble, you need to get down, sweetheart. Get down. There you go. Samson. Sadie. Lily, I'm sorry I'm late, guys. Marble. Here you go, Samson. Yeah, you're the big one. You're a big piece of chicken. There you go. There you go. Samson. Samson. He's new. He's still learning his name. He's pretty new. He came in, oh, I guess it was the beginning of November, maybe the end of October. Uh, probably November, I think. Started really seriously looking for a ram. I wanted to bring him in, you know, to, uh, to um, give these girls a, a boyfriend so we'd have some, have some little, have some, uh, that's all I've got. They don't believe me unless I show them. That's all. That's all I've got. That's it. That's it, Marble. She's the most skeptical of all of them. That's it. Sometimes, Samson, he, he came from a good home, when I gather. But, uh, uh, he, uh, he does sometimes get a little bit, a bit aggressive or confused or frustrated. I don't know what to say. But uh, we're working with him. He's uh, he's gotten a lot better. He was actually real just standoffish for the longest time, just you know, not really all that friendly. And now he's getting a lot friendlier and starting to settle down a little bit. It's good to have the girls already trained when I brought him in, though, because uh, you know it gives him a somebody to look at, see what's going on. Well, peer pressure. When I first got them, they were they were skinny and they. Uh, they um they were not only were they skinny they were they were real real skittish they came from a big herd up north of undisclosed location and uh you know they uh looked like the lady just had too many sheep for the size of land that she had uh they're probably on Oh, well, the piece of land there on here isn't probably quite as big as she had, I'm guessing, about 150 of them on. So, they've got a lot more grass here and work to do for me. They're, this is my pecan orchard, and they're keeping the grass trimmed here in the pecan orchard. And giving me a little, um, giving me some, uh, some, not only are they keeping the grass trimmed, but they, uh, they help fertilize the place and uh, chickens and the geese help fertilize and keep the uh, you know keep the grass down a little bit. I still have to mow. Um, 
so far. And uh, in the pond here, last time I came down here, brought you guys with me, the pond didn't have any, not a, just a barely a little puddle of water in it. Uh, now it's almost full. It, it was completely full. And, um, you know, I, I, uh, since then, I ain't going to just take a look. <clears throat> since then, uh, it's, it's soaked in a little bit. <clears throat> we get to some periodic, uh, just some periodic, um, storms here and there. We'll be okay on water. Uh, there's my overflow drain right there. And that runs underneath the ground all the way through there and over to on the other side of where that timber is over there and comes out of the ground over there that was a big project and i hand dug all this right here this uh pond right here i hand dug that uh it's not very big yet but you know i did it with a shovel because i don't own a backhoe <laughs> or one of those little mini excavators and uh, I looked in and rented one of those little mini excavators that everybody, everybody's always got on YouTube and wow, they just don't tell you that those things, at least where I'm at, cost about a thousand dollars a week to rent one and uh, I was just way out of the budget so I broke out a shovel and I went to work and, and uh, every year I get a few more <laughs> shovel folds out of it, uh, not as much this year as I wanted to but uh, you know, it's a nice little pond for the for the geese and the chickens to drink out of during the winter time and fall. It's not lined; it just soaks in. It goes; it stays it has water in it through the through the winter time and the spring. Uh, you know, the fall, uh, depending. It it dries up in the it, it dries right up in the uh, in the summertime though. Now I've got another another big pond way back that way. You know, we got 22, 23 acres out here. And, uh, yeah, got uh, nice big uh, pecan trees that are probably, most of them are probably well over 100 years old. Uh, this pecan orchard was planted, uh, originally planted back in the 20s. And, uh, yeah, it was kind of a, local thing for a little while. There are a lot bigger pecan orchards than this around. It's just an old one that, uh, you know, no, we're, we planted some more pecan trees and then I have uh, natural, you know, volunteer pecans coming up out in my main pasture and I'm kind of trans, uh, kind of transforming that into more of a silvo pasture, food forest arrangement as time permits and, and, <clears throat> And funds allow. Uh, so these uh, we have what they call native and paper shell pecans. Uh, a lot of the natives are little bitty pecans. I mean, like a little bitty. They're tiny, tiny, tiny pecans. You never see them at the store. There, uh, I'll eventually show you some of them. I sell most of those. They're just not. If the price isn't high enough, I'll grind them up and feed them to the chickens. You know, I figured out at one point I was, I was taking in five gallon buckets full of pecans, selling them and, and uh, oh yeah, two five gallon buckets is, uh, is about 50 pounds. And a 50 pound sack, you know, a feed, it's cost me like, I was, I was getting like $20 for a sack of, for two five gallon buckets of pecans and I was, I was paying uh, $20 for a sack of corn, you know, like scratch grain, uh, you know, premium grade scratch, game, scratch grain, you know, with all kinds of stuff in it, not just corn, but, oh, Milo, some millet, uh, wheat, uh, some oats and uh, sunflower seeds and uh, peas and all kinds of stuff, but um, I was paying, or or like a little sack of layer pelt was about the same thing, about twenty dollars, and I was getting that for a, for two five gallon buckets of pecans, and I was like, well, it's about the same weight, uh, and I thought to myself, well, even with the uh, even with the weight of the shell, which is 
Uh, it depends. Maybe about 40, 50 percent, 60 percent on, on, you know, depending on the nut. Uh, it still had to be more, more um, nutritional value than what the, what the scratch green I was using it to, to buy. So, you know, that year I decided, well, the price just didn't high enough, and I just crushed them up and fed them to the chickens. And boy, I sure did like that. Uh, of course, that wasn't their, their sole feed that I gave them. I mean, you can't just eat one thing. A lot of protein, a lot of uh, a lot of dietary fat in the winter time when that's kind of an important thing for calories. Eggs came out real good. I do that time to time. Um, you know, but <clears throat> that right there is my water system. That's where I get the water to uh, to um, keep these guys in water all the rest of the year when there's not a pond running. And uh, well, uh, I had uh, system set up so that I had water inside but um, I had some pipes bust last winter and just haven't gotten it put back together again we'll see if I I may or may not you know get that uh, done this winter probably wait till the summer comes around but uh, that just gives them water uh, early in the morning right now before I get out here they wake up before I do chickens are like that geese are too after the chickens wake them up but uh you know that's kind of what we're doing out here Let, let's go ahead let's go ahead and go uh to take a ride change tanks Everybody.